In terms of the, the, the importance of, of understanding place and acknowledging the land, um, where that uh, really came to be important to me was in the period of time after the financial crisis and the rise of the Idle No More movement and Occupy. And well, the Idle More No More was the acknowledgement and the rising up of, of Indigenous voices around um, uh, the land and uh, the land that is occupied. Um, and so that I think was a trigger because I, UBC was very much um, engaged in that. And many, there were more sessions uh, related to especially Indigenous perspectives and the lack of acknowledgement of land. And it really is only recently that we've been doing the land acknowledgement so prevalently at UBC. And so to me, it really came out of that and then specific um, events at, through CTLT and the classroom climate. I think it would have definitely been a classroom climate um, uh, session that I would have thought there is something very seriously missing from what I'm doing in my classes. If I'm talking about economic history, economic development, and, and I'm not at all addressing this question of, of place and whose place, and in particular, the, the perspective from Indigenous people. I was uh, brought the idea of, of a workshop, um, uh, acknowledging place, um, where am I and who am I, where am I from? And uh, so we had orig originally done that on campus. And so now I have adapted that to an online format in collaboration with staff from um, CTLT, uh, namely Janie Liu, first of all, and then also uh, more recently also with Chloe Erlinson. From the way I teach, what I'm trying to do is to move away from this idea of the so-called banking approach um, that has been spoken of by Paulo Pierre and others, um, where I, I'm, I play a role of depositing information um, to, to students and, um, and that uh, that's how they're building up their knowledge base. But in this way, of what I'm trying to do more is to place students at the center as uh, learners, okay, yes, as students, but also as creators of knowledge and insight. And so um, to put them into that role of taking in information, yes, but also through their uh, uh, engagement with others, with the engagement with the material, and then also thinking about their role um, is to then be helping to facilitate um, more knowledge, additional knowledge. To have students engage with uh, the, the thinking about the land that UBC is situated on, in particular uh, Musqueam uh, traditional ancestral and unceded uh, territory, and through what lens? Well, through the lens of Jordan Wilson's walking tour of the house posts on UBC campus. And so uh, we had originally done that in class, and so how to adapt that to the online uh, format. And what uh, we, we did, we had three parts to the workshop. And so much of the work for that workshop was done prior to the workshop itself. Uh, so students uh, were asked to um, watch some videos, um, Elder Larry Grant, talking about the land acknowledgement, uh, uh, why, what it means and uh, what its importance is, and then also Link Kessler uh, talking about why we do that at UBC. And then we also uh, talked, about, uh, the students also watched a video about the Delta and uh, animation, of the Fraser River Delta, just showing um, how long uh, this 
the, the geological history is, but also of the Musqueam people who have lived in this region for thousands of years. So they're watching those videos um, as well as Musqueam through time. And so I think they get a really good sense by watching those videos of uh, the, the significance of Musqueam's relationship uh, to the land, this place that UBC is situated on, even before we get to the, the workshop. So uh, then they also had some uh, on pre-workshop pre um, uh, uh, activities that involved uh, watching Jordan Wilson's the video of Jordan Wilson's tour, and then um, and then uh, reading the booklet, his the booklet that goes along with the tour of the house posts, and each student was assigned uh, to um, get to know two house posts, and to then write down uh, questions to certain prompts answers to certain uh, prompts and then put that on a Google Doc and then uh, they were also assigned into uh, one of eight different groups. So these were going to be where they will be discussing with their fellow students in uh, the actual workshop. have seen as it was happening the positive benefits on students that uh, the engagement that was uh, going on in the chat um, also the engagement um, we were able to see that students were actually engaging during the uh, collaborate ultra breakout sessions and um, uh, so we can see that there was that engagement first of all and then secondly on the chat you can see the comments that were coming in about how students were uh, affected and, and the observations they had about uh, the meaning of the, the post, the length of time that uh, Musqueam people had been on this land and then also um, uh, also, uh, what was interesting that they, they talked about how emotional it was because some of the activities, uh, one thing I didn't mention previously was that um, students also um, uh, engaged in an activity where they considered where they come from. What is their history? What is, what is their thinking back to their childhood? What are their memories? And uh, in particular about the place, thinking about place. And uh, so many of the comments related to that talked about what an emotional experience it was, not just in terms of their own um, recognition of, of these experiences they had as a child, but also this uh, connecting with what that might feel like for Musqueam people and their connection to the land. They did actually raise that explicitly. So I think that that is one of the purposes of the workshop is for students to be able to make those connections between themselves and their own experience of place and maybe even of the land, of, of the place, the land, um, but how others will feel that. And so to have a sense of connection with Musqueam and, and their their uh, sense of place here at UBC.